Up next, we have someone who appears to be suffering from a partial blindness, uh, Dan Fitzpatrick. <laughs> That was his first joke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm obviously very sensitive about this, so I was really hoping you wouldn't start off by asking me about it, because usually that's not the right way to start off a show. Now I'm feeling a little uncomfortable, but I'll try to get through this anyway. I think my formal attire says it all, but I'll say it out loud anyway. Out loud anyway. Uh, happy Black History Month. <laughs> it's my second favorite racial holiday after Eskimo Supremacy Week. But the great part about Black History Month is that it's for everybody. I was on the shuttle earlier tonight when I really immersed myself into the uh, Black History Month spirit. It was packed to the brim, but I managed to snag two adjacent seats to give my feet some breathing room from a very painful and fragrant fungal infection. Um, and then this white pregnant lady, you know, she struts on up to me. And she asked me to move over. I said, huh, nice try, racist. And I forced her to stand for the remainder of the ride. Um, she ended up giving birth right down there, on the aisle floor. And it was an experience that really changed me. It showed me that you can't immediately judge people by the color of their skin. You have to wait for their true insides to emerge. <laughs> but, it is. Occasionally, you really don't want to see the inside, though. You've probably seen those weird TLC shows where people are falling in love with man-made uh, structures and objects. And this is very personal to me. I fall under this category myself. I'm attracted to women. Um, <laughs> but then there's the lady who married the Eiffel Tower, and people are having inter intercourse with um, buildings and bridges and stuff. And it's just very concerning, because I don't think anyone ever could have envisioned Tetanus becoming an STD. <laughs> but I mean, for those kind of people, being an architect must be the best job in the world. With all those blueprints, it's like getting paid to look at porn all day. I mean, uh, just let me add in my load bearing beam. We gotta insulate your ventilation ducts if you know what I mean. Yeah, you know what I mean. I'm gonna make you structurally unsound. I'd love to make love to your roof, but unfortunately it's covered in shingles. <laughs> Sorry, but there was no warning about roof sex jokes. Um, now this may seem a little bit unorthodox, but I'm planning on getting a tramp stamp that reads employees only. This way, this way if I ever find myself in a prison shower room, all the other potential rapists will be like, whoa man, I better keep my distance. I don't want to get anybody upset. <laughs> I'm up for parole next month, I can't afford this, and besides, the discounts here are fantastic. I can't afford to lose my discount card. <laughs> I'd like to do an observational joke for you next. Hopefully you can relate, relate to it. Um, so, what's the deal with ghost detectors, and why is it so socially unacceptable to bring one to a funeral? <laughs> <laughs> you get up. You know, scan around the casket a couple times during the eulogy, and suddenly you're not invited to the reception anymore. <laughs> but um, even worse is when the relatives of the deceased ask you to communicate or do something special for the spirits. So, Nana always wanted to go to France. Could you could you send her spirit there? I, I try to humor them. So, well, no, but I am keeping her spirit bottled up in a great coupon Dijon mustard jar. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of uh, sacred ceremonies, a whole lot of people are against gay marriage. They say that by definition, marriage has to be between a man and a woman, otherwise it's not marriage. I feel the same way about soy milk. Where the hell do those people get off? If it's not from a cow, it's not milk. It's just, it's an unholy bean orgy in a, in a satanic garden of sodomy. And these vegan soy whores claim to be open-minded and accepting, but in the end, they're really nothing but lactose intolerant. <laughs> but with animals, I believe we can learn a lot from them. Now, dogs, they urinate on things to mark their territory, and this works for people, too. And it's especially useful when you're at a competitive antique auction, or, <laughs> or when your book club is down to the last brownie. <laughs> so, I've been doing a lot of thinking recently, and I've decided that I want to gain a lot of weight. There's a certain point where obesity 
stops gaining your ridicule and starts gaining your respect. You know, people, <laughs> they will not question me lest their pets, children, and homes be devoured. Um, so, you know, people like to question my authority. They'll ask me, shouldn't you take a bath? And I, at this point I can say, well, I happen to like my new barnacle colony friends. It's, it's a symbiotic relationship. Uh, don't you think you've had enough to drink tonight? I think I'll have had enough to drink once I wet myself in public and start shouting ethnic slurs. <laughs> no, no, just stand there. Get me some towels, you dirty pole action. <laughs> so, I just like to finish the night off with a very special Black History Month surprise. So, I'd like you all reach underneath your seats and let me know what you find. Participation, please. All right, there's, there's nothing under there, because the real gift that we have is each other, but, but mostly me, because tonight I've given black America what it always has wanted most, a well-dressed white man to speak for them. Thank you.